welcome back to our channel and this video is done for my students who are enrolled in the subject the teacher and the community school culture and organizational leadership so based on the title of this course um, we may be able to learn the importance of creating a good relationship with the people in our community Okay, will tend to realize the importance of school culture and how to establish a positive school culture and at the same time we will be learning about the necessities of organizational leadership but for this first module we will be discussing about the philosophical thoughts of education that would help you realize the importance of building interpersonal relationships and engaging in reflection and meaningful discourse in the teaching and learning process. Okay, before we move on to the various philosophers and their, philo uh, and their philosophies, I would like to present two important ideas which you will be meeting as we go on with our lecture. The first one is the banking method in education what does it mean how does it uh, being employed employed and the second one the isolated facts what are these are these important are they supposed to be given in the classroom uh, situations or in the classroom discussions all right so we have to discuss what is this banking method in education so when we speak of the banking method in education, uh, this is basically a very traditional approach in teaching and learning. When I was a kid, when I was in elementary, even in high school, um, many of my teachers were followers, were uh, yeah, followers of the, the banking method in education. During that time, this particular method was so effective because we have learned a lot of things using this method. But because we are already in a new um in a new era then i think there is also a need to explore um the use of other uh, more relevant teaching strategies okay so it is a traditional approach in teaching because it's teacher centered all right the teacher does everything the teacher is just uh, is expected to uh, the student rather is expected to just store the information given by the teacher to recall accurately the information given by the teacher that is why the t the, the student in this particular method is likened to a sponge okay nag-aabsorb lang siya ng mga information na binibigay nila at hindi siya nakikiparticipate sa kahit na anong lecture sa kahit na anong discussion or sa kahit na anong um, dialogue that is why in this particular method, the students are considered um, empty receptacles of learning or passive agents of learning. Ang mga teachers naman, dito sa, sa method na, is, na ito is uh, considered to be the fountain of information. Everything comes from the teacher. The teacher deposits information and then withdraws, withdraws this information during examination, recitation, or quizzes. That is why the teacher does everything in the classroom. Um, he is the sage on the stage, they say, and he, he or she is the one giving everything in class. The laws will be given by the teacher. Um, the, the topics to be discussed will be decided by the teacher, even though the strategies would be based on the desire of the teacher. Okay, so in this kind of, you know, teaching method, the world is seen as a static and unchangeable and that students are expected to fit in it as it is. So they do not have any rights to complain and to ask for, for anything because they are merely re receivers of information, alright? So, but there are also, like what I said, this particular method when I was a kid was very effective because maybe of the kind of of students they had during that time. Pero kung titingnan natin ngayon, marami na ring, marami na ring mga flaws ang, ang banking method na to na hindi na actually na re recommend ng mga educationists. Alright? Una, kapag ang teacher ay gumagamit ng banking method in education, um, since the, the information is um, taught in an isolated manner, the, the learners are not given opportunities to find interconnectedness between and among these information, these pieces of information. And moreover, 
the students as well do not do not see the the relevance of these topics to real life so they do not see the importance of learning such topic so parang pag ang topic mo ay math at pinag-usapan ay Pythagorean theorem, okay, kapag banking method ang ginamit ng teacher mo, sasabihin lang ng teacher mo na ang, na ang Pythagorean theorem ay may ganitong quadrants. Kapag ganito ay nasa first quadrant, pag ay most positive, pag ito ay parehong nasa fourth quadrant, ganun. So parang purely giving of information. Okay? So, kung ikaw naman ang estudyante ngayon, sabi mo, why do I have to know the, the Pythagorean theorem? What benefit could I get from that? Okay? Who the hell is um, um, Pythagoras? Ay, siya ba? Hindi ko alam kung siya pala. Pero parang ganun. So, parang hindi mo alam na estudyante kung bakit kailangan mong pag-aralan ang mga bagay na ito. Eh, kapag nagpunta ka naman sa palengke, you will not be using all those things. Alright? So, kapag sinabi, find the value of x and y in mathematics, if the teacher uh, does not give us the importance of the x, the value of x and y in real life, so parang iisipin ng, ng mga estudyante, ah, why would I learn that? Why, would, why is there a need for me to learn that? In fact, kapag ako ay nasa palengke, I would not uh, be saying, oh ate, pabili nga po ng x na talong at y na, na okra. Alright? So, that's basically one of the flaws of banking method. Okay? The students fail to to look into the interconnectedness of that topic to a bigger picture all right ang isolated facts naman parang kanina bakit kailangan mong pag-aralan ang x tsaka y so bakit siya tinawag na isolated facts okay do not get me wrong ha factual information ay napaka-importante kaya nga tayo nag-aaral because you have to learn factual information pero may term na isolated meaning dinidiscuss mo lang ang topic na ito as it is siya lang hindi mo siya kino-connect sa ibang subject matter hindi mo siya kino-connect sa ibang discipline you are just teaching that topic as it is so wala kang um they call that um I forgot the term. Basta you, you do not connect uh, all these things in other subject areas. Okay? So, yun yun. yun. Um, kaya nga, um, kapag ang gamit ng teacher natin ay purely banking method, okay? Um, parang it's, there is really too much teaching but not enough learning. Ang tawag nila doon sa field of education is mile a uh, wide inch dip kind of teaching kasi ang dami mong mga natapos na topics pero hindi sigurado kung naintindihan ba siya ng mga estudyante o kung naintindihan ba ng mga estudyante ang kahalagahan ng mga ito. Di ba when ngayon um uh, ang kakapal ng libro ng mga estudyante sa LM at sa high school. So, kapag ang teacher mo ay very much, um, very much focused on the curriculum at sa textbook, iisipin talaga niya na dapat matapos ang lahat ng mga topic. So, uh, okay, parang ngayon, di ba, sa ating curriculum na meron tayo, um, ang mga libro ng mga estudyante sa elementary at sa high school ay napakakapal. So, kapag ang teacher mo ay napaka-focus lang sa kung paano niya matatapos ang lahat ng subjects na to, paglalecture lang siya ng maglalecture without ensuring na kung naintindihan ba siya ng mga estudyante niya o hindi. Ito yung gaya ng sinabi ko ko sa kanina, ang dami niyang masyadong na-discuss, napakalawak ng kanyang scope, pero napakababaw mile wide inch deep kind of lecture which is a big no no nowadays all right so kapag kasi pag ganun ang ginagawa mo gaya ng sinabi ko there is too much learning but not too much teaching rather but that's there's no enough learning okay that is why um it is really important that we have to look into other methods which are more relevant and which are more interesting to the diverse students that you have. So, we are not supposed to be into, when you become teachers, I also discourage you to make use of the banking methods. And I also discourage you to teach information in isolation. You have to always make sure that you find the interconnectedness and you find the relevance of all these in real life. Because at the end of the day, alright, they will not uh, remember um, these theories, these um, 
these laws about the different subjects but they would really understand they would recall information if those information um are connected to the real life ah kaya pala kailangan kong malaman ng value ng ganito kasi ganito pala siya sa buhay ko ah dapat pala malaman ko ang different parts ng ng digestive system okay dapat malaman ko na nanggagaling siya sa mouth the ans esophagus and that my food is being digested in my stomach and the digested food is in my small intestines ready to be distributed in the different parts of the body at ang uh, and this undigested is in my um, large intestines at ito na yung mga nagiging tae okay, kailangan ko malaman yun pero kailangan ko rin dapat malaman na o oh, kaya pala kailangan ko malaman ang mga parts na to ng digestive system kasi kapag hindi ko pala nanguya masyado yung pagkain ko magchoke pala ako which would actually endanger my life ah, kaya pala dapat ko malaman yung mga ganitong kinakain lang dapat because uh, this could not be digested well by my stomach ang tendency niyan, magkakaroon ako ng iba't ibang klase ng sakit. So, uh, it's not enough that you are just into the facts. Okay? It would also be a lot better if you go beyond the facts. Okay? So, until such time that these facts will become, um, um, uh, these facts would turn into skills at the same time. So that uh, kind of banking system was actually being explored by one of the most renowned uh, educationist and philosopher named Paolo Freire in his book titled The Pedagogy of the Oppressed. Okay, I actually this is one of the, the books that you have to read because this particular book was um, tell us the ideals of reconstructionists, of uh, social reconstructionists because these social reconstructionists, they really would want to believe that the system must be changed and uh, must be overcome to improve human conditions. And one of the systems that, mu that must be changed, according to Paolo Freire, is the banking system in education. Because if this is what the, the, the school is uh, doing, what the teachers are doing, then you can never change human conditions. You can never change the face, the face of education. Okay? So, Naniwala, uh, Paolo Freire also claims that education and literacy are essential for social change. Actually, they are agents for social change and that humans must also be educated in a well-dignified and defined manner so that they will not become victims of oppression and that they will not become oppressors themselves. Yun yung kanyang mga ideals. That is why naniniwala siya that because schools and teachers would change a certain person's perception, dapat patibayin at strengthenin natin ang mga schools at ang mga teachers. And Paolo Freire also saw teaching and learning as a process of inquiry and of active learning. Meaning, in contrast to that of the banking system, Paolo Freire considered teaching and learning as a process of inquiry, as an active process, where the students should be the doers of the action, where students are not supposed to be just there, passive, um, passive agents of learning, seated there just getting information by the teacher but according according to Freire students must be the one to act so that they would learn so they will they are not supposed to be taught what is to learn but they have to be taught how to learn for themselves how to be responsible for their own learning how to invent and how to reinvent the world and he also believed that the teachers are not fountains of knowledge. They are not supposed to be sages on the stage. They're not supposed to be the one giving everything, all instructions to the students. They are supposed to be the guides on the side. That is why ang mga teachers, because teachers are no longer sages on the stage, but guides on the, on the side, then they are supposed to be facilitators of learning, per se. So when you become high school or elementary students, uh, teachers rather, then you have to think of strategies that would make you not, okay, not the source of 
information, the sole source of information, but you are supposed to be facilitating learning per se. Bigyan ng chance ang mga estudyante na magsalita ng mas matagal because the more they, they speak, the more they learn. And that is also what I'm going to do when we are already in the face-to-face -face lecture, alright? Or classes, okay? So, he also uh, proposed what you call the theory of critical pedagogy. And the focus of this theory um, of critical pedagogy is on dialogue. Naniniwala siya that sincere dialogues... Um, would promote respect and understanding among, between and among the students and teachers. So, doon sa sinasabi niyang dialogue, okay, it's just like interaction, interactive discussion between the teacher and the student, okay? The, 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 the student should have the right to raise questions if they do not understand the topic at hand, and the students should be given the right to you know, to, to, to express uh, their interest and their desire. So teachers would also would be crafting strategies that would address this desire and this need. Okay, that's Paolo Freire. The next one, we have John Locke. And John Locke is considered to be an empiricist educator. When we speak of empiricism, ito yung, uh, ang mga empiricist kasi, naniniwala sila that the knowledge of the world is based on one's experience. So kung ano ang alam mo ngayon, kung sino ka ngayon, yon ay accumulation of all the things you have experienced in your life. Okay? The, that's the accumulation of the dealings you have with the people around you or with your society. Si John Locke kasi, kilala siya sa kanyang theory that child was born as a tabula rasa or a blank slate. Malinis na papel, walang laman. So dahil wala siyang laman pagkapanganak, then that child is neither good nor bad, but that child's character is based on his experience of the world and of his dealings with the environment. So, the nature and the nurture would actually um, positively or negatively affect child's character. Okay? Tapos, si John Locke, kaya nga sabi pala ni John Locke, dahil malinis na ipanganakang malinis, walang walang dungis, walang laman, walang dunong, okay? Kaya napaka-importante na habang bata ka, tinuturuan ka na ng mga bagay-bagay na maganda, ng maayos, so that you would um, acquire all these things as easy as possible, so that when you grow old, you are nothing but a good man. Okay, yun ang gusto ni, ni John Locke, alright? Kasi totoo naman ang mga bata, tingnan natin, napaka-open nila sa lahat ng mga information. That's why um, the, the role of the teacher is very crucial in making or breaking this child's life. So kapag bata pa, ang, ang, kapag bata pa siya, mura pang, nasa murang edad pa, it is just very easy for this kid to learn something new. That is why it's so easy to teach kids with new tricks. But all dogs can no longer learn, you know, new tricks. That's, real, that's really what's happening nowadays. And John Locke was not a fan at all of the classics. Meaning, hindi siya naniniwala na ang mga tao ay natututo lamang exclusively from literary sources, especially literary pieces of the classics, the Greeks and the, the Romans. So, Kasi naniniwala siya na the learners uh, would be learning a lot through authentic experience and that they are the agents of their own learning. They make their own lives. They are responsible for their own learning. Uh, they, they live the life that they want. Yun ang paniniwala ni John Locke. And another very important thing na I think relevant sa atin na paniniwala ni John Locke is that he negated uh, divine rights of the king. Ito yung mga paniniwala that ang mga aristokrata ay ipinanganak para maging leader ng isang lugar. Hindi siya naniniwala or there, para sa kanya, no one is destined to be a ruler forever. Okay? Because people should establish 
their own government, and that select their own political leader. Bakit ko sinabing very relevant? Take a look at our political dynasties in the Philippines, di ba? Porque mayor na yung tatay niya, parang sinasabi na ng mundo na magiging mayor din yung anak niya, at yung anak niya lang ang pwedeng pumalit sa kanya. Porque governor lang ang magulang, lahat na ng anak magiging governor na din, at lahat ng mga apo magiging politiko na din. So, um, no one, according to John Locke, is destined, is destined to be a ruler forever. Alright? So, ako, kahit na I'm not from political clans, okay, if I would want to be a politician, a better politician, then I should be given the right to do such. Because, sabi nga ni John Locke, I have the freedom to be a ruler, to become a ruler if I want to, and I have the freedom to be of help in making my own government and in selecting my own political leaders. Okay? That's how good John Locke's ideas are. Okay? Next. We also have Jan Dewey. Jan Dewey is one of the most prominent figures as well in the field of education. At nakilala siya because of um, learning by doing or learning through experience. Okay? So sa kanya naman, hindi sapat na alam mo lahat ng mga theories sa subject area mo, sa subject matter mo. Ang mahalaga is that you know how to apply that in real life. Okay? Kaya nga, para kay John Dewey, education, gaya ng iba, education is considered to be a social process and schools are related to the society it, it serves. So, education is a social process. It's a product of a community. Okay? It's a community of people willing to learn and to take part um, sa mga changes na gusto nilang mangyari sa kanilang society. And that schools should make sure that it is serving the society it belongs. That school so is serving the society it belongs. And since a school is a social agency, social agency because people will go there, because people are being developed in the school, the ideals of the people originated from the school and from the teacher, then the main function of the school then is to shape human behavior and to shape human character. Kaya nga minsan, di ba? Med pero medyo nakaka-frustrate kasi ang expectation natin sa mga ibang Catholic schools would uh, produce students who are um, who are examples of their ideals, who are molded to be better individuals. Pero take a look at our politicians nowadays. They're graduates of Catholic schools and look at them now. They do not embody the vision of their school. Okay? So, uh, schools, uh, according to John Dewey, uh, naniniwala siya ng schools could actually be participative of a democratic process and that the schools are for the people and by the people and the schools are democratic institutions where everyone, okay, uh, regardless of economic status, regardless of the background, everyone is encouraged to participate in a democratic process. Okay? Wala dapat maiiwan. There should be an equal opportunity to be given to all members of that community. That is why, kay John Dewey, mas maganda that they'll think that students in school, ang strategy daw na dapat gawin is to give uh, students the opportunity to think of the problem that they're interested in, um, they should be the center of the educative process and they should solve, uh, they should act to solve the problem and they should do, they are encouraged to apply solutions to whatever problems uh, ang nakikita nila sa paligid nila. Okay? At saka, uh, in contrary naman sa idea ni John Locke, si Dewey naman did not disregard the ideas of the past. Naniniwala siya na marami pa rin siyang mga matututunan sa mga nangyari noong nakaraan. Pero, it is then the job of the students to give, to, uh, to test the applicability of the information gathered from the past. Because ideas are still relevant and the ideas that are still relevant, the past ideas that are still relevant, uh, should be used and the irrelevant ones must be forgotten, must be unlearned. That is why for Dewey, 
the ideal learner is the one who does not only learn by, by doing, who does not only conduct experiments, who does not only apply the, 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 apply the theories learned in the four corners of the classroom, should not only find solutions to problems that are within the locality or the community, but also connect accumulated wisdom of the past to the present. So if you are able to if you are able to apply what you have learned and at the same time you are able to apply you are able to look into the applicability of the past ideas to the present scenarios or context then for John Dewey you are an ideal student okay next the next philosopher is Jan Count all right so Jan Count on the other hand um, believe that the school and teachers should be agent of change. The schools and the teachers should be agent for social improvement. So, kung makikita natin lahat ng mga philosophies, ng mga philosophies ng mga ito, they really believe that schools and teachers are uh, are agents, di ba? Sa social transformation, sa social improvement, and that's also true to judge. Um, that's also true para kay George Count. At naniniwala siya, he actually reiterated um, the need of everyone to change really for the better and not just for the sake of changing. Okay? So, um, change is the only constant thing in this world. I know, death pa pala, tsaka taxes. But change is one of the, the most constant, one of the constant things in this world. So, Lahat actually nagbabago, pero hindi lahat nagbabago para sa kabutihan, for the better. Okay, yung iba nagbabago para sa kasamaan, pero para kay George Counts, everyone should change for the better, okay? And that for everyone to do that, to change for the better, then the schools and the teachers should make sure that it provides, that they provide quality education, and equal learning opportunities for the students. And ang best na teaching method para kay George Count ay problem solving, like the other uh, philosophers I mentioned. So sabi niya, expose mo sila sa uh, authentic problem at hayaan mo silang mag-isip ng kanilang paraan para masolve ito. So kung ikaw ay isang teacher sa social studies and your topic is about pollution, Ang sinasabi nila George Counts. And di kung pulis ng topic mo, then papuntahin mo sila sa lugar para um, expose sila, makita talaga nila yung katotohanan ng pollution. You send them to sanitary landfills, maybe. You send them to cities, maybe. And then, you expose them to these real problems. And at the end of the day, you let them think of their possible contributions on how to solve those problems that are within their locality. So, ito yung mas magandang ipakita mo. Let them see the real problem. And let them think of the possible solutions for those problems. Okay? At ang isa pang magandang sinabi ni, ni George Counts is that um, lahat na lang nagbabago. Okay? Um, ang technology nandyan na, ginagawa niyang flat ang mundo. Ang technology, ganyan na, ginagawa, pinag-uusap niya ang mga tao sa iba't ibang lupalop ng mundo. Okay? So, evidently, ang evident, rather, ang material progress, sabi ni George Counts. Material progress is ever, very evident, but sad to say, the moral and the ethical development seem to have left behind. Okay? In reality talaga, improvement is very visible. Uh, lahat nagbabago, lahat ng klase ng pamumuhay natin nagbabago. But the humans are still as crooked and as flawed as before. Diba? Hindi nagbago ang mga tao. Nagbago ang pamumuhay ng mga tao, pero hindi nagbago ang mga tao. Crooked pa rin tayo. Flawed pa rin tayo. Okay? That is why I would like to share sa inyo yung isa sa mga, uh, mga favorite poems ko. This is titled The Paradox of Time. I would like to read the, the, the stanzas I really love, which has something to do with 
uh, material with what George Count uh, selling us. That material progress is very visible, but morality and ethics ay hindi pa rin nakikita sa mga tao. Yun ay napag-iwanan na ng panahon. So, paradox of time. We have bigger houses and smaller families. More conveniences but less time. We have more degrees but less sense. More knowledge but less judgments. More experts but more problems. And more medicines but less wellness. So ironical. That we have multiplied our possessions but reduced our values. We talked too much, love too seldom, and hate too often. We've learned how to make a living but not a life. And we've added years to life but not life to years. Right? This is really what's happening in the world. Okay? Morals and values and ethics are really left behind. Okay? So that is why, according to George Count, building a new social order is indeed necessary. We have to change our ways. We are not supposed to be changing our our the way we uh, I mean we should not be changing the physical um, aspects of life but we have but more than that we have to change our ways and we have to change how we live our lives so building a new social order is indeed important okay and I think this is the last philosopher that I'll be giving you Theodore Bramild and he was also known as one of the reconstructionists like um, the previous philosophers I mentioned at naniniwala naman si Theodore Bramild that uh, being a, a rec, that being a social reconstructionist you uh, teach humans to be truly humans Pero ang dali lang kasi maging tao, pero mahirap magpakatao, di ba? And that in order to create order, then the schools should teach people how to be in control of their own destiny. So, ang buhay natin ay hindi predestined. Hindi dapat tayo naniniwala sa, sa destiny or sa fate. Because everything... Um, ev that we are responsible for everything that is happening in our lives. So when we fail later on, okay, sa buhay natin, we should not be blaming the people around us. But we have to blame ourselves because we are totally responsible to the kinds of life that we have. Okay? We hold our lives. We make our own destiny. And considering that is happening nowadays, according to Theodore, there is a need for the society to be reconstructed before the society destroys itself. And if the society destroys itself, everything that is in it, even people, will be destroyed. So schools then, according to Bramall, should enlighten students to about social problems. Gaya din kay George Counts, expose them engage them so that they may be able to be aware of such and so that they may be able to to be moved to act to and to be influenced to act for the better okay so everyone according to bramal as well everyone must be given the everyone must be given equal access to education and that any form of discrimination must be eliminated that is why he, he reiterated that there, is, there should be an equal access to education and everyone must be educated in the same manner regardless of race and social status. Okay? So, uh, I hope you have understood all the, the philosophies given by these philosophers. I love their ideas. Alright? And they are just telling us that um, that it's really a lot better to have a kind of education where it allows people to be part of a community of inquiry, okay? To help people understand that each of them, each of them takes a vital role in creating 
a very good society, a society that embraces nothing but positive outlook and positive actions to reconstruct the society that we have. Okay, uh, uh, that would be all for the first module. As for the second module, we'll be having a new video for that. Okay, thank you. See you next time.